This is the unboxing and review of the Full Mechanics Aerial from Witch from Mercury. We have here the Full Mechanics Gundam Aerial from the Witch from Mercury. This is the most recent uh, Full Mechanics that has been released uh, so far as of the filming of this video. And the quality of this model has been favorably compared to the quality of many different Master Grade kits. This is also like a Master Grade A1100 scale model. And I, I'm really looking forward to building this because I've heard such great things about how it, how it goes together and how it looks when it's done. So, as is typical, there is artwork on the cover of the box, which shows the mobile suit in action. On the side here, we've got just basically the, the chest and head, but we also have the pilot, Saletta. On the sides, we have some photos of the model completed. The front and back, and then it goes through many of the gimmicks and effects that it has on it, including the separation of the shield into the gun bits. And then on the other side, a few more um, poses of the model kit. The It shows the base, but the base is sold separately. It doesn't come with the kit itself. So... So let's take a look at what's in the box. So looking here, we've got our A runner, which is very typical for any mobile uh, mobile suit kit in that the A runner is almost always multiple colors, many times including also some clear pieces. So in this case, we've got the aerial blue, some yellow, and then the smoky uh, clear plastic, which normally is used to be placed over the, um, the activation effects that happen on the mobile suit. Then we go through some of the standard colors. We've got our, our white runners. We've got a B. This looks like it's probably going to be armor and and other items for the head and those waist and stuff like that maybe some shield pieces on there we have two c runners we have a one and a two and normally if they're individually numbered like that it means that they're all they're, they're not complete duplicates like as you can see with this one it's almost a complete duplicate duplicate of then the other runner, except one runner has this part in it, whereas the other one didn't need it because this doesn't get duplicated. Now, one thing to point out, I've noticed this happening on a number of mobile suits as well, where they put these extra supports so that, especially if they've got pieces that have to extend quite a bit off of the uh, runner, especially down or whatever, or even up. I've seen them do it to protect the top of the pieces. They'll put these little protective pieces so it doesn't push down in the box and, and possibly damage the pieces. But those aren't anything that needs to be used as part of the model or anything like that. They're just there to protect the runners, the pieces on the runners. So we We've got 2D runners, and it looks like these are going to be inner frame and stuff like that. And we have an E, which looks like weapons, places that, you know, the, 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 the place where all the gun bits uh, connect in order to form the shield, and then some inner frame pieces as well. We've got a couple of small runners that have the red pieces because this being the primary uh, mobile suit of the Witch for Mercury series, the colors are going to pretty much reflect uh, the basic Gundam 
main suit Gundam colors, which is the, you know, the original RX-78-2. So you're going to have the red, the blue, the yellow, and the white. And in this case, with the aerial, the blue is just slightly paler. We've got some effect pieces. We've got the, um, the laser sword beams. And in, in the case of, an air, of the aerial, the uh, beam effects for the swords are flat and it has it doesn't have a round connection it's more of a, a triangle I mean a, a, a rectangular insert piece and then this here would be effect would be the effect on the, the weapon and it looks like we have some metallic red and this is basically coated uh, plastic, so the underlying plastic is this silvery color, and then they put the red uh, coating on top, giving it more of a metallic feel. Now it looks like these are probably those activation effects that I was talking about. So these would be the pieces that get incorporated into the inner frame, and then the cloudy clear plastic would be the pieces that cover these up. And it looks like these are not undergated. However, it looks like every place where these connect will either be pegs, you know, places where things snap together, or at least would be hidden and not apparent um, in the mobile suit. It's, you know, when the mobile suit's put together. Because I'm, the unfortunate thing about the coated plastic is that when you're cleaning up them, uh, no matter how careful you are, just because of the way the coating is done, even just snipping the nub, you're going to see the plastic underneath. And it's always a different color. But luckily, these are done in such a way that it's not going to affect the overall look of the mobile suit itself. So... Now, the kit comes with uh, stickers in order to do the markings on the mobile suit once it's put together. And these do feel like they're more like the realistic stickers because they're satiny instead of uh, glossy. And hopefully that means that these are going to be like the realistic stickers, that they're much thinner. So the edges don't show as, uh, as much as the more typical shiny, slightly thicker um, stickers. Now, of course, we're talking millimeters and such like that, but the difference between a one millimeter and a two millimeter once you put it on the model is significant in in how it shows the edges and, and instead of incorporating nicely. And, and nice thing also I found with the realistic ones doing some realistic model kits is that I can put them on there and then I can coat them with the softener that I use for my for water slide decals and it makes them show up even less. It, it kind of tones them down and kind of melds them more into the plastic so you don't see the edge even more. So now what I've done is I've gone ahead and gotten water slide decals because I because I prefer using water slide decals. They're just much easier for me to work with and they don't show as as much as even the realistic stickers do and stuff like that. And it's just easier for me to manipulate these into place as opposed to having the, you know, the stickers and stuff like that. Even with the soapy water, I much prefer manipulating the water slide. So this here I bought from a third party because at the time uh, Bandai did not create make a water slide um, decal set yet. And I'm not sure if they actually did the full mechanics. I know they did it for the H, no, high grade model kits. But so, but I used, uh, this is a third party, which is Delphi. And these are very good. The, these are, Delphi is one of the two best third party water decal producers. And the nice thing is that the numbers that Delphi Delphi uses on the um, on the water slides match up with the decal numbers that Bandai produces here in in the stickers, which means that 
at the back of the manually when, when you have the markings diagram, these numbers correspond with what's on the water slide uh, backing as well. So it's easy to use the water slides with it. But you know, if you don't want to get the water slide or you don't like working with water slides, this being more like the realistic stickers, these will be just fine to work with. It might show a little bit more on the blue, but like I said, try using the softener that you can get. I use the Mr. Mark softener, which is from Mr. Hobby, and that'll help these to blend in more and not show the edges. Or if you wanted to, you could take the time to try to, with, with an X-Acto knife or something, to try to eliminate as much of the edge as possible off the sticker before applying it, and that'll help as well. So we've got here the manual that reproduces the cup, the box art on the cover. And it shows us all the various runners that come with it. Now some of the uh, some of the runners, the pieces are actually undergated, which means instead of the the gate being attached at the side of the piece off the runner, they actually have put the it's underneath the runner so that when you clip the, the, the piece off the runner, it's, you're actually doing it under the piece, not to the side. So you still want to clean it up, but it's not going to show. You don't have to be as careful of eliminating the, you know, the, the stretch, you know, the, the uh, nub marks off the, uh, the plastic, the, the stress marks, or so, uh, because that is never going to show because it's going to be under the piece instead. And that's nice that they do that with certain pieces. Um, so yeah, and, and looking at this, it looks like everything is PS plastic, polystyrene. So you can use any type of paint or panel liner that you want without having to worry about damaging the piece at all. And then it just goes through and it looks like Looks like with the, at least the newer uh, full mechanics, it starts with the arms, then goes to the body, and then works its way down. You know, does the head. Oh, I guess this one does the legs before the waist. Okay. So I guess there's no real hard pattern on the, <laughs> on the um, order in which things are. Now, oh, almost always the weapons and the shield are the last things you put together, but the rest of the body could be in any form. So, and then it shows how to, you know, manipulate the gun bits and stuff like that. And, and then, like I showed before, the last page in the manual is the markings for the decals. And then on the back, for anyone who wants to do painting, it shows you the, um, the color guide for mixing your own paints to, to match the color of the plastic. And then... This being one of the newest ones, you've got your Japanese text and your English text. So it gives you some history about the, you know, the mobile suit, the, um, the pilot, and then it has all the translations you need for the color paints, paint colors, sorry, as well. We have here the Full Mechanics Aerial, and this is the main mobile suit from the Witch from Mercury anime. And this was quite fun to put together. This is, an, this is the first 1-100 scale of the Aerial. They also had done an HG, which is part of the Witch from Mercury kit set. This was, you know, if you put together the HG, version of this, then this is all very similar as far as the pieces and how they go together. There's quite quite a bit more detail, a lot more color separation. One thing that I really am impressed by is that this had absolutely no color correcting stickers, where some full mechanics you do get color correcting stickers, and even some master grades you get color correcting stickers, but this didn't even use any, not even for the eyes or the camera lens. It had a kind of green 
uh, plastic piece, not quite translucent, but it, it was it was quite nice. And that's what does, if you can look here, that's what does the eyes right there and the camera lens at the back. And it looks really nice. I mean, it it's not as shiny as, you know, metallic stickers would be, but I don't think it looks bad because they're recessed anyway. So you really need to get the light to, you know, capture it properly in order for the reflectiveness of the metallic stickers to show. And I much prefer not having to deal with stickers, <laughs> the color correcting type at least. So this is not quite 100% out of the box. Um, this has been panel lined. I, instead of using, the kit does come with um, its own stickers. And these are more like the realistic stickers. They're a little bit thinner and they're more matte and silk, you know, kind of like a satiny finish. But I didn't use these because I prefer using uh, water slice decals. So I got some third party water slide decals for this because. And I hadn't gotten the uh, stickers at the, their water slide decals out. And I use Del Pie, which is one of my favorite, favorite two third party vendors. They're very close to the Bandai ones anyway. So I use those. So that's what the markings are on here. They're the water slide decals. And this also has a matte clear coat on it to protect the panel lines and the, um, the decals that I put on it and stuff like that. Now I did make sure, unfortunately I did forget to do, I, I missed the back part, but where these uh, highlighted areas for the activation mode that's common with the aerial, I did mask those with some masking tape so that those stayed shiny. And essentially what these are is with the HG kit, there was essentially stickers that stuck on the inside of the plastic because this is like a smoky clear plastic and so they use stickers that stuck inside well, what they did with this kit is they actually created separate pieces for the internal part which were a, a red metallic coated plastic and that's what's underneath the uh the um the clear class. If you look there, you can you can kind of make out the red on there. So it looks really nice. That that's for all these here, here, the the uh, the chest, and also the arm uh, shoulders right here. The the two places here. Now, unlike the HG, you can't decide whether you want deactivated or active mode because it's all active. But I it always made me wonder who would choose to do deactivated in the HG and maybe Bandai realized, even though they gave that option, probably hardly anybody would have used the black underneath the smoky um, plastic as opposed to the activated graphics. So that doesn't really detract at all from it. Um, this was very easy to put together. I, I believe that it also would have been very easy to put together had I not done the HG because it's just the instructions are very clear and the pieces go together very easily and nicely. Um, you know, there were a couple places like, you know, this is a newer model. So, the you know, the um, fitting of the pieces are not quite as exact as some real grades are where you really have to get everything lined up before you push them in. But they are, this is very, this is a very tight model. Um, every, all the joints are nice and tight. There are no um, poly caps in this. It's all plastic on plastic. In fact, the joint system on this is very similar. And actually, I'm almost exact to what the HG is, just higher scale. So it's all plastic on plastic stuff. Um, but I um, forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> I apologize. But... Um, but yeah, but everything is tight on this, and 
you know, it's got all the things that you would expect on a Gundam-style mobile suit. And, of course, it's got the traditional colors that are, you know, more reminiscent of the original Gundam from the original series, which is typical of uh, the uh, the Gundam, the main Gundam suits just about in every anime or even, you know, manga. The core Gundam suit follows the um, the original that's how you can kind of tell who is the, the primary one. So, and in this case, that's what Ariel is for Witch of Mercury. So, but I, but like I said, I really did enjoy this, even though I, you know, I, I believe this would be easy to put together, even if I hadn't done the HG. And it, and it is very nice. This is going to look really good on my, uh, my shelf. Okay, let's take a look at the accessories. Now, it comes with typical... You know, you have your gun, which is the Ariel's gun from the anime. It's got the shield, which this separates into the gun bits. Um, we've got the, on the backpack, you have the handles there. And it's got two beam savers with the, the, uh, the clear plastic for the, for the actual beam. And just like the other aerial, these are a rectangular peg as opposed to a circular peg. So they're, you're not going to be able to use these with anything else unless it's a rectangular peg uh, on them. But there's a lot of nice detail on this because it's a much larger thing than they could do for the uh, HG. So it does look really nice. And that's a good thing. You know, obviously they didn't just take the HG kit and make everything bigger. They put the detail that they were able to. I mean, this is a very well-designed kit. For the blast, uh, for the, for the rifle, you can, you have a beam effect on it that you can put on and off. You just kind of slide that right in there. Um, these, when, when you take this apart, these come off as the gun bits, but you can put these also right in here, so that it does kind of an extended rifle barrel type thing almost. You can't do the beam effect at the same time, but that looks pretty cool. Oop, got it upside down, but anyway, it still looks cool whether it's upside down or not. <laughs> um, one nice thing here is with the gun is it does come with this little connector so that you can put this in, and there, there's like an I-beam thing here, which connects it to the actual, to the gun right here. You just got to work it a little bit and get it in there. And then this peg is compatible with anywhere that you have a peg. So it's on the leg here, on the backpack, even on the arm right here. So you can have the gun stored in any way you want. Um... So, and then um, it comes with now. I, what I've got on here are the are the two hands that are unique for each size. So on the right right hand, you have the trigger finger for the gun, and that's on there. And each hand has has an it has a basically a, a ball joint thumb that can move, and that's important because there are no pegs that connect like the gun or any other you know the the, the handles for the beam so late uh beam savers so everything depends on the fact that it fits in there and then the thumb basically holds everything in place and it works pretty well you know very rarely have i had something come apart while i was doing the posing for the figure presentation so it does work pretty well it's just a little bit awkward so for the right hand you have the trigger finger for the gun, and then on the left hand, you have the open hand. And there's no open hand for the right or a trigger for the left. And then you have your um, optional hands. You've got two fists. You have two, two closed fists, one for each hand. And you have two grasping hands. And this would be to hold on to the, um, the, uh, 
lightsaber, beam saber. And the way that these go together is basically every the hand stays together and you just take out the fingers. And then you put the new set of fingers that you want to work with in there. And that's how you change. That's how the hands are done. It's just, you're basically just changing the fingers. So. And that's pretty much it for the accessories. One thing you do get, and I've got it on here already, is you do get this. This is the adapter for the, um, for the stand, and it, and it works with a typical, you know, one one hundred scale, master grade, whatever, uh, stand. I think this is a type five. I think that's what they call it. And you just kind of stick it in there like that. And one thing I did notice is that once you have it attached, I mean, it seems really, really sturdy when it's on there by itself. But as soon as you attach it with this extra lever here, then it's real easy to come off. <laughs> it just comes off with any kind of motion. So that's kind of why I've got the stand itself kind of tilting back a little bit. You don't have to have it tilting back that much, but I found that if it was straight up and down and it wanted to wobble a lot. So, and then when this isn't on there, when it's not on the stand, then they've got a, a little part that just covers that up. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation, which I'm actually quite impressed with the amount of articulation. I have done other full mechanics, and they haven't been as articulated. So, first, the waist is put together in such a way that you can bend it back, and you can bend it forward, and it has just a little bit extra on the for bending forward so that it can bend as far forward as you want it. It can turn. You can't do a full... Well, probably, yeah, it looks like you can. But you probably don't want to because it just starts getting in the way of the um, side skirts, even though they're very tiny for aerial. It's almost no, It's almost like just kind of a hip skirt <laughs> um, as opposed to complete side skirts. But So here we have the shoulder, and the shoulders can move all the way up. And you've got this extra little bit that can move around here and then in here you've got this little bit that can move back and forth so you do have some good articulation in the shoulder we'll keep that up the arm it can turn all the way around it's got kind of this extended a little bit more movement right there in the shoulder back and forth just because of the way the joint that holds it together the arm can go all the way out, level with the shoulders. It, the arm turns at the shoulder, which is nice, because not all arms will do that, but this one does. Trying to keep track of where things are here. <laughs> um, it has the typical elbow, which is really a single joint, but it goes up pretty far for a single joint. And also it turns where the elbow meets the forearm, so that's nice. You can have some extra articulation there. And not only that, but there's another joint right here in the forearm, forearm that allows just the forearm to go up. It doesn't go up a whole lot, not quite at a 90 degree angle, but it does give you some additional articulation, especially since you can turn it, and that means you can get the hand further in if you want, type of thing, go towards the middle and stuff like that. So, you know, with the fact that you can turn up here and you can turn here and then bend this, you really have a great range that the, that the arm can go into. And then on each hand, You've got the thumb, which has a ball joint, and you can move the thumb around in that ball joint. And, which I'm really appreciating the fact that this is, looks like it's the way that Bandai does it nowadays, is that essentially the ball joint is held in place by the back of the hand. 
the way that everything goes together, so you don't have to worry about the ball joint popping out like you like early real grade hands and stuff like that. So, you know, the the unfortunate thing is is that I don't know if it's so much unfortunate, but that there is no articulation in the fingers, um, which you know. That can be a bit of a pain in some cases. There, there are other ones, like I did the um, Master Grade SD, and that had articulation in the fingers as well. And the way that they did it is they kind of split the fingers into a three-finger and a, and a single pointer finger. And the way that it those had individual ones, but they, they, the, they had ball joints, and they were held in once again by... The backing of the hand so they never popped out which is great but in this one you don't really need the articulation because it gives you plenty of alternative hands for the grasping and the trigger and all that kind of stuff so you really don't need the articulation in that in that um, aspect so here on the backpack we've got the you know you put the handles for storage you can just kind of move them back and forth the head has the forward and backwards this has the forward and backwards movement. You can turn it all the way around. And of course, you know, tilt the head up and down, not just have the, the neck move back and forth. So, and you can go somewhat side to side, but not a whole lot. It's more forward and backwards is the main part of the movement and the turning. Um, here in the, I already did the waist. But as you can see, you kind of have the ab crunch here as well, which is nice. And then here in the, as far as the skirting is considered, there's a little bit of movement on each side skirt. But they're really, they're really just kind of hip skirts. And even this front part comes out a little bit. Push that so it comes out just a little bit like that, but not a whole lot. But you don't really need a lot of movement there. It's got individual front front flaps, but once again, these are really quite tiny compared to some kits out there. And then the leg. The nice thing is, is that for the most part, the skirts don't get in the way of the leg movement so you can go all the way out not quite a 90 degree angle but you can get it out there pretty far and of course it can come come forward not quite a 90 degree angle Let's see if i if, if you if you bring the leg out a little bit more it can come up a little bit more so we're probably looking at what a right around a 45 degree angle you can get it up higher if you use the other leg joint now, it can definitely go back further, a little bit further. So if you're using the hip motion of the other leg, you can get one leg up fairly far, but then you're, you know, moving, you're throwing aerial backwards. But that's okay, because that, that actually is a bit more natural in movement. And it does have the, it has the two-joint leg, doesn't quite go to a 90. It goes to a 90, but not a 180. You can't bend it all the way back. But it also has this nice little, right here, this nice little feature there where that pulls out when you're, when the knee comes out. And so that's a nice little addition. We got the foot. We've got the, you know, the ankle armor right here. You can twist the foot all the way around. The, toes can go quite far up and there's even a little bit more articulation in the front of the toes and then the the foot can kind of rotate somewhat but it rotates the heel at the same time that you rotate the the toes it's all connected through here and so you can't really move the heel separately So that's the articulation on the main mobile suit. And then th there is no articulation at all on the, uh, the gun. 
but there is some articulation on here where this has a sliding mechanism to bring this all the way out. So you can just kind of slide it back in if you need to. And the same thing on that side. And that's pretty much the articulation on this. This kind of, this moves a little bit, but I don't think it's supposed to. I think it's just supposed to nest in like it is right now. That was kind of strange without the, <laughs> without these pieces in there. So it took me a second to realize what was different. Oh, wait a minute, what's going on? <laughs> so, so that's the articulation. It, it, it's, it's, it, there are places where I'm really happy, like the arms. There's so much more little tiny articulation you can do that it really gives you a lot of movement in the arms and the hands and getting the beam rifle or the beam sabers exactly where you want them. And a little bit less in the legs, but that's okay. You can still do some interesting poses um, with the legs as well, especially if it's, you know, if you have it on the stand and you're, you're emulating um, flight you know, being in, in space instead of walking on the ground, so. So as I said, I'm really happy with it overall. Um, I think it's a very well put together kit. I like the design. I think the, the fact that it's a larger kit, it's a 1 100th, a lot more detail was put into it. Um, and a lot more, you know, subtle articulation in the arms especially, which is very nice. I wish they would do, I, I hope they do that with, with newer um, full mechanics kits as well, because that, that really does make things really nice. So, I mean, for a grade, I do very much like just about everything, but there's a couple things that just kind of are just a little bit annoying. One, that there's no peg system to put the rifle or the... Uh, the beam sabers in the hand, so the really the only thing you 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 have to keep things in place is the thumb, which can come you know which can release them, or they you know especially with the beam uh, sabers they slide back and forth when they're being grasped, so that that's a little bit of an annoyance and the fact that this adapter for the stand it fits really nice until you put it on the stand, <laughs> and then. It just, um, it, 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 it will come off, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable having just this hold on to it when I have it on the shelf because I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that eventually it will just kind of slip down and I don't want anything to break on it. So I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing when I display it yet. But, um, so because of those, I am just going to give it an A. I mean, I think this is an excellent model. I love it. It's it's It feels good in the hand. The joints are rock solid. I, I wanted to give it an S because I, I, would, I wanted it to be the pinnacle of the line. But just because of those couple of, of little things that I've discovered that, you know, make it not quite perfect, I guess, I have to do an A. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you for the next one. Thank you for watching this video right to the end. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That does help out the channel. If you would like notifications as to when new videos are posted to this channel, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you do have time, please do enjoy one of the videos that are popping up around my head.